Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem path sum. We are given the root of a binary tree and an integer, which is our target sum value. And we want to return true if there exists a root to leaf path. A root to leaf path is basically a path that starts at the root node of the tree and keeps going down until we reach a, a leaf node of the tree. And a leaf node is basically a tree or a node that does not have any children. So it doesn't have a left child and it does not have a right child. Now, this is a binary tree, but it's not a binary search tree, meaning that the order property is not valid, right? So this eight node over here has a left child of 13. That left child is not less than eight, but it's still a left child because this is not a binary search tree. It's just a regular binary tree. So the fact that this is not a binary search tree means that we definitely have to go through every single node of the tree. We basically have to look at every possible root to leaf path in the entire tree and see if any of those paths ends up totaling the target sum value. So just to kind of emulate what we're going to be doing, we're going to start at the root five. So our sum so far is five. We're going to go, you know, just, let's just start at the left side. We could go right, but let's go left first because it's kind of natural. And then we get a four. This is not a leaf node yet. So we keep going. Our total so far is nine. Uh, we're going to go left again. We are at 11. Now our total so far is 20. Uh, and by the way, our target is going to be 22. So this is still not a leaf node. Now we go left again. Now our total sum is 27. That's greater than 22. So this, uh, even though we're at a leaf node now, this is not what we were looking for. So let's actually backtrack. Let's not uh, choose this path. Let's not go to seven. Let's actually go to the other node, uh, which will give us a total of 22. And that's exactly what we're looking so, uh, for. So now we actually did find a single path that does equal the target sum. So we can definitely return true. All we were looking for was at least one path so we can return true now. But if we didn't find the leaf node in this position, we would have to try the other positions as well, right? We would, instead of even going down the left subtree, we'd have to go down the right subtree. We'd have to check this path, uh, which is one path to a leaf Node, and then the second path would be this one to the other leaf node. Neither of these paths uh, ends up giving us the target value. So just by kind of looking at what I did, if you are familiar with binary trees, you kind of know what I did was basically an in-order traversal, right? An uh, in-order traversal and in-order DFS, depth first search, right? And the easiest way to code this up is usually to do it recursively. So we can do exactly that. It's a very simple DFS problem. The only thing is we'll be have to uh, maintaining our current sum value, right? We'll have to keep track of some total and then continuously check if that total is equal to the target sum but we'll only be checking that when we actually reach one of the leaf node in our tree and we can check that by making sure that none of these nodes have any children right no left child and no right child so with that in mind we have enough information to actually code this up. now let's code it up we're actually going to be uh, creating a helper function we're going to call it dfs and we're going to define it inside of our outer function uh, the reason we're doing this is we actually need to pass in one more parameter that the outer function does not have, and that is our current sum, our, our current total that we have so far. And we're going to be passing in whatever node we're at, but we do not have to pass in the target sum because the target sum is never going to be changing. And within our inner function, we'll actually have access to this outer value anyway. So one thing we're going to do is start with the base case. We actually could be given an empty tree in this case. And based on one of the uh, example cases that they gave us, if we ever have an empty tree, we have to return false anyway. Even if the target sum was zero, we still have to return false because there technically does not exist any root to leaf paths. But if the node is not null, then we can take the value from that node and add it to our current sum that we're keeping track of. And that's pretty easy to do. And the first thing we should check is now intuitively, maybe we found the result, but how do we know if we did? Well, we have to make sure that this node is a leaf node. So basically if not, node dot left and not node dot right. So basically it doesn't have any children. And the last thing we're checking is, does the current sum equal the target sum? But we actually don't have to check this in a condition because we can actually do it just like this. If this is a leaf node, 
then we know we can't really run DFS on it anymore anyway. So we're going to return if the current sum is equal to the target sum. If it is equal, then we're going to be returning true. If it's not equal, we're going to be returning false. So it works out. But if that's not the case, if it's not a leaf node, then we are going to be running DFS on the left and right side. So let's say a DFS on node.left, passing in the current sum as well. Uh, and let's call it also on the right subtree as well. But the thing is, if either of these ends up returning true, then we can return true, right? We're only looking for a single path. So the easiest way to actually code this up is just to say return the uh, or condition from the return values of both of these function calls. So we're gonna say, take the return values of both of these or them together, right? If either of these is true, then we can end up returning true. And that's actually the entire function. Now, all we have to do is just call it, let's call our DFS passing in the root node. And what should we pass in as the current sum? Initially, we can just say it's zero and then we can return the result of this function. Now let's just run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work. And it's pretty efficient. It's about as efficient as we can get because yes, we are having to look at every single node in the tree. So the overall time complexity is gonna be big O of N where N is the number of nodes in the tree. The uh, overall memory complexity is gonna be the height of the tree. In the worst case, it could be big O of N. If it's a balanced tree, the height is gonna be log N. So that's gonna be the memory complexity. Uh, from our recursive call stack. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.